Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon, now the news in detail. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will arrive in Nagaland on June 4 to attend first Nagaland CSR Investment and Banking Conclave to be held at State Capital Gohima. Addressing the press conference today at the Capital Convention Center, the CEO of Investment and Development Authority of Nagaland, Alam Demshi Jamir, informed that the first Nagaland Corporate Social Responsibility Investment and Banking Conclave 2022 is all set to be held on 4th, 5th and 6th July at Gohima with Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman along with major corporates and investors from all over the country. Jamir also informed that many big companies and investors with good corporate social responsibility will be attending the conclave. Move forward and we want to have a little bit more details. Okay. I will discuss uh, and will take questions from you. There is one last final word that I would like to add. Why the CSR? You know, all globally, the social, political and economic paradigm is changing. And the things are moving into the private sector. The corporate world has overshot the political boundaries, the administrative boundaries, and they're, you know, they're growing like anything. And uh, this uh, CSR, uh, I'm sorry, the corporates particularly, you know, a few years ago, to be a lakh party was a big thing. And then after that, the crowd party, we used to have, you know, there's something unimaginable. But those have now receded the background, and you have Elon Musk, and you have Gormoni. 2,000 billion years around the world, billions. And slowly they are moving to 371 billion and then now and then soon they will reach the economy of a trillion. So the private sector is growing and they are growing in terms of not only the economic growth added to the GDP, but they are growing in terms of investment in the development sector. And the uh, United Nations have made the SDGs and uh, there, there are many corporates that have been uh, acting into the SDGs and this CSR activity is particularly aimed at improving the sustainable, to, to contribute to the sustainable development goals. Jamir disclosed that Nagaland is getting only 0.006% of the total CSR available in the country and therefore the basic intentions is that at least Nagaland can be able to have 1% of S1% is about 200 to 300 crore. Currently, he said total CSR availability in the country is about 27,000. CEO also added that there are two particular districts, Noglak and Mon, where lots of CSR investment is going on. He also said that all the DCs and NGOs were submitting a lot of projects and schemes, which will be discussed with the companies to get it through. This conference has been uh, uh, initiated to make the people aware of what is CSR and how to access CSR. So we have uh, uh, brought in a lot of companies, big, big companies, which are giving good uh, CSR. And then we hope that through this, uh, people will have more access. Nagaland is getting only 0.006% of the total CSR available around the country. So we have to increase at least to 1%. To 1% will be about 300 crores. Right now the total CSR available for the country is about 27,000. Although 1% is uh, about 200 crores. So that is the basic intention. And uh, we have asked Nirmala Sitharama to come in and then she has uh, agreed to make it into a bankers colloquium and then uh, investment uh, you press people will make it more aware and then uh, as i have mentioned there are two particular districts Park and mom where uh, the dcs have been very proactive and a lot of csr investment has gone into those districts so people are getting aware and then they also uh, to, uh, to, to 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 fill up you know, to know more, and then all the DCs and all the NGOs are further, uh, they've submitted a lot of projects and schemes, and which we hope we'll discuss with the companies and we'll get it through.
So the actual CSR initiative activities have started in the eastern Naga areas, Mohan and Mokla and Kipri. So that is something which uh, is very heartening. In a major accident that took place today at Gugidolong near Aikar of Chumukidima district, killed five persons and injured three. According to the Commissioner of Police's office, three male died on the spot while injured were rushed to CIHSR. It was informed that two more males succumbed to their injuries. Three other injured, including driver of Eco Van, are currently undergoing treatment at CIHSR. In this connection, a case has been registered and further investigation is underway. Hornbill TV visited the site to get a ground report. An eyewitness informed that a truck was being driven on the wrong side of the lane when an eco van heading towards Kohima was hit by the truck. The eyewitness also said that the truck driver was under the influence of alcohol and tried to flee with his truck. Today morning, new Mezipi made a serious accident. I said that the accident was very bad. Idu accident dek ini kita nak hisse, atau kuna galat ya sese, idu jangan boleh mula dek ayu ini sesi nak hina sese. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Abang la nama tu kaya sese. Mula nama tu Sudir Chowdhury ya sese. Upale pahara tu madu kaya kini LP khanna nasa ta besi thagi sese. Tapi agi parah hi mistek bal parah na cila kini ayi kini besi speed parah ayi kini Dimapur ah tu na taxi khan taxi khan ayi thagi sese. Besi tapi normal tu, hole bi LP ah tu na besi speed parah ayi sese. तो ताए अचानक पर आई कि नहीं मारी दी से आरो बेसी ताए एलपी लाई बेसी रोंग था किसे ताए ना उल्टा पर आई ऐसे खोले भी मारे कि नहीं ईमान स्पीड पर आ पुलाई चेना ताए पुलाई पुलाई कि नहीं पीछे तो पुलिस कान भी था किसे ताए भी बची से ताए बची कि नहीं पीछे तो स्कार्पियो तो था किसे ना ताए अलाप साइड तो था किसे इतु आर मानो तो बिहारी खान भी था किसे प्लेन्स मानो पांच टा आर नागा मानो भी दो टा था किसे आरो किमान जोन किमान जोन सीरियस इंजर हुई थी इधो याते तो पांच टा मोरी जाई थे पांच टा स्पोर्ट तय हो जाई थे पांच जोन मानो स्पोर्ट ही मोरी थे आरो इधो पांच जोन मानो मोरा तो की की मानो था किसे पांच जोन तो बिहार ला� होले भी याते पर आतो ना चार टा याते मोरी से एक टा तो इनका इनका वही था किसे तीन टा मिला है कि नहीं गाड़ी तोड़ी से होले भी उन्हीं आते एक टा बिहारी आता तभी मोरी जैसे नहीं कि यान कौन मोरी से ना जाने अरे तो जख्म पाम मनु होने की तो हॉस्पिटल लो जैसे ना लो जाने हॉस्पिटल लो जैसे तो जख्म महल आयुविन्यास पर कौन इच्छना इधर जगह दे बिशी सीरियस एक तरह से नहीं होगी शे अरो तायबर को आ हिसाब दे तो गाड़ी तो एलपी दो दंगों त्वरफ चक्कर लग रही है तो ये ती गैस पानी वाला है रोंग साइड पर आए थे किसी के अरो ओल्ड ताय निशा खाएं थे किसी के उधर साइड पर टैक्सी एक तरह इको कर रही है तो आए पकोड़े मरी ना इधर जगह थी ये तो क्या बोल रही है अपने यहाँ दिखा नहीं ना इतने भी इधर जगह तो सफा भर बहुत है और वो सब जगह दे दोर में खान इधर विक्टिम खान मुरी जाला चपल खाने दे ऐसे और इन्हें इन्हें इधर से टीवी ग्लास खान की बात भागी ना घरेलू ग्लास खान भागी ना सुख शे और आई विटिंस प्रो को इधर ताता करी तो सीधा पोले जी सुख शे ना रुकी ना और इन्हें ये तेला लोकल मनोहर बा ये तेला काम ग्रीट खान मनोहर बा आही ना डेट बुद्धि खान तो उठे सुख शे कुन्बा 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 ताते औसोरे न्यू चुम्बकी दिमाग दूर ही चुकी है। इधर ऐसे जिला ग्राउंड रिपोर्ट मुझे ऐसे रिपोर्टर पंकज ग्रोंग विद कैमरा पर्सन एरोन फॉर हॉनबिल टीवी। Four bodies were found under the debris at a landslide hit railway construction site in Manipur's Noni district on Saturday, taking the toll to 29 officials said. 34 people are still missing and bad weather is affecting search operations, according to officials. They added that a search started at 4 a.m. and rescue teams have been advised to proceed with caution. Rainfall since early Saturday morning has hampered the operations. Out of the eight bodies recovered so far on Saturday, five are of territorial army personnel and one of an employee of a construction company. 
The two others are yet to be identified. An official said eight bodies were found on Thursday and 13 yesterday. 18 people were rescued from the site on Thursday. Over 470 personnel, including those of the National Disaster Response Force, State Disaster Response Force, State Police, DSM Rifles and local volunteers have been deployed in the search operation. Over 30 excavators are being used to clear the debris which blocked the Ejai River, forming dam-like storage and threatening the people living nearby. Earth movers have been brought in to remove the debris and create a channel to allow the flow of water from their officials said. All Nagaland Taxi Association Walker Unit on Saturday felicitated the children of its members who got through high school living certificate and higher secondary school living certificate examinations. Secretary to the Government of Nagaland, retired and Vice President, Central Executive Board of Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party, Y.M. Hunzoi, graced the felicitation program. Speaking at the program, Hunzoi congratulated the six successful students on their various academic achievements in bringing laurels to the taxi association family when their parents were working day and night to meet their needs. Called upon the successful candidates to walk extra mile for their future prosperity. President Lota Students Union Ashandan Hunzoi told the students that their parents have a huge responsibility and play a vital role in the community with their services as a taxi driver and he advised them not to be ashamed of their parents' profession as they are highly respected for their duties. President All Commercial Vehicle Association Wuha District Ren Binguli reminded them success comes to those who sacrifice and help themselves. Altogether, six students of ANTA Woka Unit family of HSLC and HSSLC students were awarded for their meritorious achievements, while one candidate was awarded for securing a job in All India Bank Service exams. The Indigenous People Forum Manipur will be tabling Indigenous People Bill Manipur in the Assembly to safeguard the Indigenous people of the state. This was informed by IPFM President Asan Gasar. Speaking to Hornbill TV, Kasar said that the bill they are preparing will be an inclusive bill of all the communities residing in the state. He said non-Indigenous people are occupying every sector of the state. That is why they feel the need to pass Indigenous People Bill. He added that indigenous people may even become minority in the state. On 2nd July of 2022, with the Indigenous People Forum Manipur, released a brief activities report. And Indigenous People Forum Manipur is preparing a Indigenous People Bill Manipur. This bill will place before the Manipur Legislative Assembly. And this bill will be inclusive to all the communities who are uh, staying in Manipur. And Indigenous People uh, Forum is focusing on development of the farming and other that the program. Today, the Indigenous People Forum is a stand for unity Love and peace. So, so, just one question. Yes. Uh, do you support this oil palm cultivation in Manipur? Right now, uh, we don't support and we don't have any idea about it also. Uh, 
we never prepare for that always. Former Chief Minister of Punjab, Captain Amarinder Singh, is likely to be NDS's candidate for the Vice President's post, suggested sources on Saturday. The ex-CM who had cut his ties with Congress, claiming he was humiliated last year, is currently in London for a back surgery. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had spoken to Singh after his earlier surgery earlier. While the last day for filing the nomination papers is July 19, the election for this key constitutional post will take place on August 6. Current Vice President Venkai Naidu's term will end on August 10. The captain was in Congress for over five decades. The captain's party, Punjab Law Congress, will merge with the BJP after his return from London. Though there is no word from the party, senior Punjab BJP leader Harjit Singh Grewal on Saturday claimed that the decision in this connection has been made. Before departing for London, Singh had conveyed his intention to merge his party with the BJP, Grewal said, adding the former chief minister will announce the merger on his return. Singh, the sky of the erstwhile Patiala royal family and a two-time chief minister, had floated the PLC after he quit the Congress following his unceremonious exit as a chief minister last year. At least five people lost their lives while 44 were injured after an earthquake of 6.3 magnitude hit southern Iran on Saturday, local media reported. The report further stated that the epicenter of the earthquake is Saye Kosh village in the Hormozgan province about 1,000 kilometers south of the capital, Dehran. Rescue teams were deployed near the site, officials' reports stated. The earthquake was felt in many neighboring countries, the report said. People went into the streets as aftershocks continued to jolt the area after the early morning quake, which also damaged buildings and infrastructure. Iran lies on major seismic faults and experiences one earthquake a day on average. In 2003, a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake flattened the historic city of Bam, killing 26,000 people. A magnitude 7 earthquake that struck western Iran in 2017 killed more than 600 people and injured more than 9,000. This is a tale of two parties and a sacrifice. The recent political upheaval in Maharashtra can be termed as a perfect political thriller. Full of dramatic twists and turns, it witnessed an equally dramatic climax when BJP leader and former Chief Minister Devendra Fatnavis ended up accepting the deputy to shift Sena rebel leader Agna Chindes' deputy. It may appear that sacrificing the CMS's chair is a step back for the BJP. But the Saffron Party has effectively ensured that Uttav Thakare can lure his rebel MLAs back. Also, the BJP can't be accused of being power hungry. The party aims to decimate Shiv Sena in the ensuing BMC polls. This step contains answers to several other questions as well. Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis took the corridors of power by storm by announcing at the press conference that Ekna Chinde and not he himself would be the CM. Forget ordinary people, even BJP MLAs were stunned. The BJP had broken up with the Shiv Sena for the CM's chair. Now that the chair was his, Fadnavis refused to take it. Bharatiya Janta Party and Shiv Sena have been in the माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में हमें पूर्ण बहुमत मिला बीजेपी को 106 सीटें शिवसेना को 56 56 सीटें और कई अन्य लोग हमारे साथ आए 170 तक हमारी मेजॉरिटी जा रही थी माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने चुनाव के दरमियान भारतीय जनता पार्टी के मुख्यमंत्री का नाम भी ऐलान किया था सबको मंजूर भी था किंतु चुनाव के बाद शिवसेना के नेताओं ने ये निर्णय किया कि हिंदू रुद्र सम्राट शिवसेना प्रमुख बालासाहेब ठाकरे जी ने जिन विचारों का 
जीवन भर विरोध किया जीवन भर जिनसे लड़ाई की और जिनके बारे में वो कहते थे कि अगर इनके साथ जाना पड़ा तो मेरी दुकान बंद कर दूंगा आज हमने सौंपा है और गवर्नर साहब ने श्री एकनाथ शिंदे जी को साढ़े सात बजे शपथ के लिए न्योता दिया है आज केवल एक ही शपथ होगी श्री एकनाथ शिंदे जी की और फिर It may appear that sacrificing the CMS's chair is a step back for the BJP. But the BJP has taken this step back so that it can jump forward. The party is eyeing a lot. These steps contain answers for several questions, concerns and possibilities. Shinde will also be able to take complete control of Shiv Sena with time. This is the game plan for a Thakri free Shiv Sena at the levels of both the party and the government. Shinde won't have to face the charge of being power hungry. Fadnavis also faced this charge when he quickly took oat after breaking up with the Sena. Attacks on the Uttaf government were also being seen as the BJP's restlessness for power. Now, the BJP has shown big heartedness by making Shinde the CM. It's a big step towards putting those charges to rest. Actually, the BJP can see a possibility in the future. This is a possibility of standing on its own in Maharashtra's politics and eventually coming to power on its own. Not only will the shifts and of the future be with it, but it will also depend on it. This is the possibility of Hindutva politics being controlled and driven by the PGB, not by Uttaf, Adidya or Raj Thakre. And even if the Shiv Sena bears its teeth, the PGB will be the ringmaster. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.